Hey guys, it's Clay. How are y'all doing today? I hope you're doing well. And uh, so here's the story. I, for a many, many years, if you've been following me for a while, you would probably notice that I have a been a big user of Audacity. It is a free open source DAW direct their digital audio workstation um, to record a lot of these YouTube videos, uh, the guitar tracks. I have used Audacity for many years. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart. I learned how to do all this stuff on it. Um, and if you go back to my very, very first videos up until probably my last 10 or so, I have used Audacity. But now I have made the jump to Reaper. Um, Reaper is another DAW, which is a d digital audio work station or work workspace, something, DAW, DAW. And uh, I have, it's actually extremely wonderful, and I'm really happy that I made the jump. Uh, and what I wanted to do right now is just kind of do a very, very beginner's overview tutorial. And um, uh, this is coming uh, from my perspective as somebody who's been using Reaper for about a month. Uh, and I am trying to speak to people who have no idea what they're doing. Uh, maybe you've never used a DAW before ever, or maybe you're brand new coming to Reaper and you just kind of want to learn some of the basic functionality. Uh, I want to cover that. I want to teach that to you guys now. So if you already are experienced with Reaper, go ahead and click away and watch something else. But if you're brand new, uh, pay attention. So this is Reaper. Uh, it actually is... Uh, Go ahead and check out their site. It's really awesome. It's a really, really full-featured DAW, and it's extremely affordable. I know that some of the really high-end ones, it can end up costing you several hundred dollars um, for some really, really high-end stuff. But now with Reaper, I believe that uh, their individual license is around $60, which is mind-blowing. Um, and if you combine that with uh, with the interfaces you can buy these days, like you can get a cheap Line 6 interface for like less than 100 bucks. So for less than $150, you can get yourself into a full-fledged studio-level uh, recording setup. So this thing is by no means sl a slouch. I would say Audacity is fairly simple. It served my needs for a while, but now that I've kind of gotten into more mixing and all that, Reaper has really been a great step up. So... Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. This is your, when you go ahead and uh, fire up a new track, this is what you get. Now, uh, one thing that you need to be familiarized with is, uh, let's go ahead and find it. I believe it's over here in the options and preferences. You can also hit control P. You really need to familiarize yourself with this. Uh, this is extremely important. Um, now, there's a ton of stuff here, and I'm not going to go through it all because, honestly, I have not even gone through it all. But... The first thing you really need to go through is this right here, your device. This is extremely important uh, that you set this up properly because otherwise you will have no dice getting any recordings. Now, uh, your audio system, you can choose that. I like to use ASIO. Um, you know, there's a lot of different choices out there. Honestly, I really am not a pro on this. I believe this uh, has more to do with your drivers and your hardware setup and all that stuff. Um, but I use ASIO. Now... Here is where you select your driver, which is going to be specifically your device. Now, as you can see, I've got my Pod HD 500, 11 Rack, Guitar Rig Session, Zoom G3. These are all, and then the ASIO for all, these are all the drivers that I currently have installed on my computer um, that have this hardware connectivity that connect can connect to Reaper as the interface. Uh, I, have, I have been using Guitar Rig Session I.O. for my interface. I'll just run my 11 Rack or whatever into the Guitar Rig Session I.O., uh, I'm very familiar with it, how it works, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, this Creative ASIO is actually my PC's driver, so if I just want to listen back, I will go ahead and switch here if I don't want to you know, mix on headphones. So I'm going to select that. Make sure you select the proper driver, though. If you're using an interface, you need to make sure that your drivers are installed and then it shows up in this list. Now for your inputs, go ahead and uh, select if you're running a stereo track. You can do two. Um, that works there. Everything looks really good. Uh, this is very, very simple, very easy to do. Now, the only other thing that I really want to talk about, and we'll get back into this later, is make sure that you know about this right here, this plugins drop down, and then specifically the VST. This is going to be very important. So just keep that in mind. We'll come back to this later. But now that you've got your driver set up, um, you can go ahead and you know start recording stuff. Now, in order to do that, you need to start a track. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can double-click here in this black space. Right there, I just added a track. This right here is my first track. You can also click up here on the right and do Insert New Track, or you can hit Control-T on your keyboard, and that will do it as well. Now, if you want to delete them, just hit the Delete key. When you select them, when you select it, it goes white. When you deselect, it goes blue. Very simple. 
Now, let's go ahead and talk about these buttons on this uh, interface here. Now, these are you also have this down here. Uh, this is your mixer, um, and then this is going to be your track setting. So let's go ahead and talk about these buttons. This here is the arm button, so if you click it, uh, this track is set armed to record. Um, so what that means, if you just want to record a basic track and you hit record, nothing will happen because no tracks are armed. So you need to hit this button first, which tells Reaper that you want to record to this specific track, and then you hit the master record. There you go. And if you want, you can go ahead and do, um, let's go ahead and delete that, and you can add two tracks. You can arm them both and record like a stereo type of a thing. Uh, very, very simple, very easy, uh, very effective. Now, um, so this actually d decides how, how you're going to send things, and I'm not really going to get into this too in depth, but this is just a good thing to know. If you're doing anything funky in terms of MIDI or whatnot, uh, this is where you would set that up. Now, this M button here is your mute. If you lay down a track and you think, oh, I don't really care for that, but I don't want to delete it, you can go ahead and mute it, add another one, and then just record again. This mute is very, very handy, so keep that in mind. Now, uh, solo, this will actually do the opposite of mute, and it will mute everything else and just leave this track as the solo. So if you are doing mixing and you want to hear just your bass, um, instead of having to mute everything else, you just hit the S, and it solos it. Very, very nice. This right here is your volume mixer. Uh, so, you know, depending on how you want to set it, you have up to plus 12 all the way down to zero, uh, which is negative a lot. Uh, very, very handy. Uh, another cool trick you can do is, like I said, it's this is pretty much duplicated. All that you see here is here as well. Um, and pretty much everything that you can do up here, you can do. So I'm just double-clicking to add new tracks. Very simple. Uh, but let's go back to the second one. This is a little trick. If you want to do, sometimes it's hard to do really fine level uh, movement. All I'm doing right now is just moving the scroll wheel on my mouse. And it just goes up about uh, three-quarters of a dB, which is very handy. It's just a nice little trick. Uh, to note there. So let's continue. Um, let's got our mixer level. Now we've got our effects here. This is extremely important. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of all these other tracks. Now um, if you remember, I actually spoke a little bit about using VST plugins. If you want to access them, um, once you have them set up, you can go ahead and click effects and you've got this whole list of plugins. Now I've added a bunch of free plugins, but a lot of these came with. Um, so this is where you start using EQs, compressors. Um, if you're doing, you can if you have something like guitar rig or like the free version of Amplitude 3, you can go ahead and add that in here. Uh, some reverbs. There's a whole ton of stuff that you can do in here in terms of mixing and editing your track to really get it to uh, fit perfectly and sound great. There's a ton that you can do here. Um, so let's go ahead and say I want to do uh, a Blockfish compressor. As you can see here, it will come up checked. Now I've got this compressor, I'm going to put it here, I'm going to add some saturation, put the air on. Okay, if I'm done with that, I just hit X. Now, it's still, this compressor is going to be applied, and if it's checked or unchecked, that determines whether or not it would be applied. Um, if you want to add something else, just double click here on this white space, and let's go ahead and add, add some reverb. Uh, let's turn the time down a little bit, maybe uh, give it a little more pre-delay, looks good. Um, and again, if you want to turn it off or turn it on, you just go like that. Now, you can also change the order in which these effects are added by simply dragging and dropping them. So right now, the compressor will actually be added after the reverb, which could be a little bit weird. Also, if you just see, I, all I did there was click, um, or just a little double click here, and that will actually bring up uh, the, uh, the effect. So if you close it and you say, hey, I'm not done yet, um, just go ahead and click on it, and it should come up. There you go. You can edit it some more. Very easy, very simple. Um, another really cool thing that you can do here is, uh, let's say you've already recorded a track. Let's just pretend that there was a track here. Um, actually, let's not pretend. Let's go ahead and do this. This one right here, this rock jam number one. So you can do some really cool things to this um, if you want. So what, a really cool feature about this is you can actually hit play and then listen to the track. And then while you're listening to it, you can actively adjust these effects. So let's go ahead and add a EQ. I really have been liking this electric EQ, which is totally free, by the way. Let's go ahead and make sure this order is correct. Okay, looking good. I want this go first, actually. So I can actually uh, do all sorts of crazy things. You know, I can apply this EQ, and you can actively hear how it sounds in real time, uh, which is extremely helpful for somebody like me, who I don't have a ton of experience with 
working with EQs and stuff like that, but you can actually, um, you know, do this in real time and hear exactly how it sounds, and you get a get a real sense for what you're doing uh, and how it affects your track. It's it's just a really really handy feature that I really like about Reaper. Um, it's it's very very effective, very helpful. And another thing you could do is if you really want to make sure you're hearing the difference, you go ahead and toggle, and it will turn it off or on. You can do this all while you're playing your track, so you can hear exactly how it sounds. Um, so it's it's really really a handy feature. Okay, so um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and cover another really cool feature you can do is you can create folders. So let's say you want to do um, let's add a new track. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a couple more tracks, and let's go ahead and uh, you can do really cool things in order to make it a little bit more manageable. Right now it's just kind of like, eh, I don't really know what's going on. But let's pretend that I just recorded these three tracks. This is, let's say this is going to be my, um, my rhythm guitar. And then, so all, you can actually name it, and all you have to do is click on this black space. Let's go ahead and double click here, and then I'm going to call this bass. Very, very easy. And then lead guitar. Awesome. You can do all sorts of really cool stuff in terms of, um, and let's say that this is our drum track. Really cool. Um, and it, let's say we don't want this one anymore. We want to delete it. You can right click, remove tracks. Easy. Uh, so we've got these four tracks. We can name them. You can organize them uh, if, if one thing makes more sense. If you want, let's say you've got like your drums. Um, and this is another really cool thing you can do as well. Let's go ahead and add uh, two more tracks, and we're going to say this is our snare, and this is our kick, just for pretending. You can actually put these in a drum track folder. So what, what will happen here is your drum track will actually serve as like uh, the master, and it will control everything within it. Now, you don't want the guitars to be in this folder. We just want these two. And in order to do that, you do what's called creating a folder. In order to do that, you go to this little button here, and you click Folder. So what that did is it made everything underneath it within it, it as a folder. Now, we don't want any of these ones, so we go to this kick, because we want this to be the last track in our folder, and we click, and there we go. So at first, it made these tracks sub in that subfolder, and then lastly, it actually cut it off, saying this is the end of the folder. So you can see here on the left side, we've got this indentation, which tells us that... Uh, within the drum track, the snare and the kick are within it as a folder. So what we can do, which is really cool and really handy, is uh, let's say you just want to adjust the overall um, volume of the mix of the drum track, but you don't want to mess around with both the snare and the kick. Uh, so all you have to do is just mess with this master drum track. Same thing with EQ. If you want to add certain effects, let's say we want to add an EQ, and we just want it, we want it to apply to the entire drum track. We can go ahead and do it here. You only have to do it once. You don't have to do it identically to every other individual track. That also gives you the freedom to, you know, if I just want to edit the snare, if I just want to put an EQ on the snare, you can do that as well. Um, it just gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility to organize your tracks as you want. Because a lot of times if you're going to multi-track, it just makes a lot of sense for you to f use folders in this way to help organize your tracks in a way that makes a lot of sense. Maybe you have, um, let's say you've got rhythm guitar as a master track and you want rhythm right and you want rhythm left. So you can go ahead and put those in here. And then let's create a folder, and let's make this the very last. Easy as that. And once again, you can adjust, uh, you know, from a master perspective or from an individual perspective. It's very, very handy, very simple to do, very, very effective. Um, so yeah, that's that's a, about it in terms of ease of use. I mean, there's a lot of other things you can do. You can adjust your uh, beats per minute here. You can tap it in. Uh, you can change your ratio. You can actually change the playback rate in comparison. I mean, it, you, there's all sorts of things that you can do. Um, it just is a very, very good program. You know, you've got obviously your start, stop, your pause. You know, this will actually go to the end, go back to the beginning. Um, it's it's really a really cool thing that you can do. You can add effects to the master track, which would actually affect everything. Um, you know, if your if your overall volume is too hot, instead of going through each one, you can adjust this in the master perspective. It's very cool, very very effective. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about. Let's say you're done. Let's say you've recorded everything. You're feeling really good about it, and you're finished. If you hit file, uh, you can obviously save it. But the if you want to just go ahead and 
uh, you know, export your track, you go ahead and click here on render. And you've got all sorts of settings that you can do. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into depth on this. For the most part, you're going to be making a WAV file. It's going to be 24-bit. Um, 192 is going to be the sampling level. It's it's all pretty straightforward. Change your file name, change your directory. Um, you know, so let's go ahead and call this track test one. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And then you go ahead and click render if you're ready to do it. So that's pretty much it. I don't think I've forgotten anything, but that's pretty much um, a lot of the basics about Reaper, about how to get it up, get it running. Um, you know, there's a lot of other little tips and tricks that I can talk about more in the future, but just in terms of very base level uh, recording, mixing, all that jazz, this is this is really entry level and how to get into it, but uh, it's a really, really great tra program and I'm really enjoying using it. If you guys have any questions or comments, if there's any big things that I missed or any questions that you have, feel free to leave them down below. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed and please consider Reaper if you're looking for a new uh, DAW solution. Uh, have a good one.